We are back on Taking Care of Business with our in-studio guests, Jeremy Stott and Wesley Berrientos. Did I get it right that time, Jeremy? You did, finally. After, okay. I will with five takes. I tell you what, I, you know, my mom wants a, my mom's Dutch. She wants a copy of this, and she is really going to read me the riot act for mispronouncing your name. <laughs> That's good. She should. I, I can it, hear it coming. It's a Marine thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a Marine yeah, yeah. thing. Okay, here we go again. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. Before we came into the studio today, I had breakfast across the street in an establishment. I won't mention the name of the place. But there was a gentleman in there, veteran, sitting at the counter, and I wish I had time to go over and talk to him, but... First thing he did with his breakfast was order a beer. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. You know, here it is, 9 o'clock in the morning, and this poor guy's starting out with a beer. It's like, we you know. That too. Yeah, we had it. We actually, Wesley and I had an uh, incident like that. We were heading down to Balboa Naval Medical Center uh, last week, you know, and we stopped off to get some gas. I, don't, I forgot what town we were in, but uh, I had kind of a Marine Corps shirt on. And Anaheim. It, yeah, Anaheim, somewhere down there. And a yeah. gentleman at a 7-Eleven or something like that at one of the little food marts, you know. Seven, what was it? it must have been 8 p.m. Yeah, 8 p.m. 8.30 in the morning or so, and this guy already had two 40s, uh, you know. And yeah. he, hey, brother, how you doing? I'm a, I'm a veteran, too. I'm in the, I was in the Marine Corps. You know, I'll bulk fuel her, yada, yada, yada. So that's great, man. Well, what's up with this? Well, I said, that's not a very good diet. You know, that's not a very good breakfast. Oh, I know, man. I'm trying to recover from it, you know. And it's just you see guys like that, and you go, man, you know, yeah. you only got one life to live, and drinking yeah. 240s, you know, at 830 in the morning is yeah. probably yeah. not where you want <laughs> to be. It's not going to get a whole lot better than that no. the rest of the day. Yeah. So we, we saw that, too, firsthand. And like I said, it breaks my heart. But, I mean, they've got to they've got to have they've got to have want to have that change change in their heart. they got to mm-hmm. be just sick and tired of living that way and, and want to change before they'll even make a, a step in the right direction. Well, there are some people that work nights, and so... 8.30 in the morning may be their evening. Oh, there goes there goes Clay again. <laughs> no, no, this guy was definitely yeah. uh, he not, looked like not he was, working. Yeah, well, or he looked like he was going to work or kind yeah. of, yeah. Because I, sh- yeah, I went to shake his hand, and his, his, his money for this beer was all crumpled up in his hand, like right. the change and everything. I think he, he had the exact amount just to, mm-hmm. to put on there, so he had basically been panhandling for that. Well, sure. I want to go back a little bit. You know, you know, Jeremy, you have had one heck of a career, and, you know, you could have really gone a long way on the professional side with football. Ball, either into announcing or some other program, but you elected to go save your country. And, and I have to give you a lot of credit for that. And now, rather than going out and working full time and being extremely successful in business, now you're serving your country, you're serving your community. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, the thing about it is, is it, it, I learned uh, early on in professional athletics that, you know what, it's just a game. We're, we're strictly there for entertainment pur- purposes. You know, I mean, you don't gain relationships through the TV. You don't gain any sort of uh, of know-how. I mean, it's just it's just a, it's just a game. You know, at the end of the day, no one really cares. You know, if you win or lose. I mean, I ask people all the time. Well, who was the second round pick, 41st pick overall in '98? Well, I don't know. I have no clue. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't really care. And and I, and like I said, at the end of the day, when you put your heart and your heart and your passion into something, you want people to remember that for the for the sacrifices of the passion and and for the the efforts that you put. And I tell you what, at the end of the day, uh, playing sports, people just don't care. They re- they might remember a certain game or an incident, but I mean, I, they don't know you. They don't build a relationship. And so, um, you know, for this being the nonprofit, being face to face with people and be able to see their real emotions. I mean, I've I've never. And I've never had so many 70-year-old men cry on my shoulder because they saw a name upon, you know, like the wall that heals, the Vietnam Memorial Wall, or seeing young kids come up to us crying because they're they're worried about their 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 family member who's deployed. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing to be able to touch people on a personal level. You know, in entertainment, you know, like it's a lot of times. I mean, people cheer for a guy they don't even know. They cheer for a guy who probably would pass him up on the street and wouldn't give him the time of day. Yeah, unfortunately, you um. You wanted to join because of 9-11, and you also were extremely close with Pat Tillman. And, you know, he was killed by friendly fire. What kind of impact did that have on you? Well, you know, it, it, after, after reading the story, when, it first, when, I, when I first found out about Pat uh, being killed in Afghanistan, I was extremely enraged. You know, I was mad. I, was, I felt like I needed to be there, just like Wesley, when he was, you know, going back for multiple tours. You know, you have a, that bond, that friendship, and I felt like I needed to be there because of the incidents that had led up to, you know, Pat enlisting, you know, where I wanted to go enlist after 9-11. I was going to walk away from the NFL in, in uh, 2001, but Pat talked me back into it and saying, no, you need to get your retirement. You need to get invested in the NFL. Get your retirement. I said, Pat, I don't care about money. 
you know, we're at war right now. We just lost, you know, 3,000 Americans, innocent Americans for nothing. I want to go fight. And, uh, you know, after I found out he was, he was killed by friendly fire, I was kind of like, to me, knowing that they released that sort of information on Memorial Day, Mm. 2004 they waited a month and I said you know what that would be just like the media or the government to go ahead and try and cover it up first and then release the details 30 30 days later you know Memorial Day and I said you know what there was something there's something wrong with that and mm-hmm. and it literally I mean from there it just exploded I mean why would they do something like that they would have been all right if you would have just told them they knew what happened that day they knew what happened within the first 48 hours if they would have just released the, the information properly instead of trying to cover it up it wouldn't, it wouldn't have drug out that long. Well, we just saw an example recently of people trying to cover something up in the Wiener story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have been covering that up, you know. <laughs> there wasn't much to cover, though. <laughs> That's from what I heard. I haven't seen the pictures. Oh, uh, yes. You know? but apparently, yeah. apparently, Clay has. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what links are you looking at there, Clay? <laughs> Wesley. <laughs> no, don't get me involved with this thing. Uh, how, how, how about them Dodgers? <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. I mean, like, you know, I don't get these guys, these politicians who are on that level, you know, they they know that they're at that level of of uh, media exposure. Why would you even attempt or even try to do that? It's, it's these people that come from nowhere who don't understand what that power means and how to how to how to control that power, and they get themselves in, in sticky situations because of their lack of commitment and lack of of knowledge on how to control that. You know, just because you're someone of power and you have a title doesn't give you the right to just walk over who you think you can. Well, there's two issues that really irritate me. One is the only reason he had to resign is because he didn't tell the truth. If he'd have told the truth up front, he'd still be in office, number one. The second issue is he's still going to get a retirement program. Oh, yeah. And the third issue is he's going to go back and get elected again because of the liberal society that he represents back in New York. It's sad, you know, like I said, and it's people, especially the retirement, but not only that, but be transparent. I mean, I I don't understand why they have to have so many secrets. You know, they want to do what's popular instead of what's right, and it's so sad, and that's what kills me about these guys. But, you know, that's here and there. I mean, maybe down the road, maybe I'll run for public office and see if I can be, you know, have brutal honesty up there. You know, I was going to talk to you about that, now that you brought that up. So (laughs) what's this about? Because you've mentioned that before, about possibly running for Well, you know, I just, you know, like I said, I've just gotten so... uh, Ne- not negative, but just kind of just uh, numb to all this stuff on TV. I actually took my satellite dish down because I got so tired of hearing all the BS. I mean, no, everybody, they can't be, nobody can be honest. Nobody can be truthful. You know, and I said, you know, that's the problem with our politicians is no one's telling the truth. I guarantee if somebody was to stand up there and tell the truth about, you know, uh, you know, about veterans benefits and, and illegal immigration type deals and all this different stuff. I mean, like, uh, you know, I've got guys that I've served with who actually serve to get their American citizenship. Why can't everybody just do the right thing? Right. You know, instead of trying to take the low road, do the right thing. And I think it's just a matter of people just are tired of hearing lies. They want to hear the truth. And I just said, you know what? I'm a guy that can't lie. I really, I mean, I really don't care. I, I mean, I've done tons of things in my life that I'm ashamed of, but you know what? I'm not going to hide behind them. Well, it'd be hard for you to get elected only because you would tell the truth and you'd vote your conscience. And if you don't vote the party line, you won't last. Yeah, well, that's what I've told people have told me because I don't, I don't, I don't walk either line. I just say, you know what? Hey, I'm just a countryman. I want to do what's right. I don't say Republican, Democrat, liberal, whatever, yada yada yada. Those words are as foreign to me as you know Spanish. But Wesley, you, uh, you're disabled. Yes, sir. I guess you're considered disabled, although you do everything and anything you want to do. Yes, sir. Did you receive a pension? Yes, I do, sir. And it's <clears throat> is it a full pension or fifty uh, percent of your prior salary? What do you get? Uh, it is a full pension, it's hundred percent, and uh, it is uh, from the VA. Uh, then they they're the ones that pay me. So yes, it's a hundred percent. But most soldiers now that will put in twenty or plus years, they might get fifty percent. They of get fifty percent of their uh, basic pay uh, from uh, their retirement date. But a U.S. legislator that works for four to eight years gets how much? He gets full pay. 100%, 100%. for life. Yes, sir. Don't you think there's something wrong there? Yes, sir, uh, especially when it's uh, that amount of money, too. And, uh, I mean, not trying to be- talk down on those guys, uh, which I'm not a fan of politicians. I really dislike politicians in general. But, uh, you know... If they want to get that kind of money, why not serve their country too? I mean, they're serving. It's you know the, the way I think is if you get elected, you're serving your country, and they don't act like they're serving their country. They should abide by some rules and some regulations, and they don't. They don't. They, they just go in there and they they, they act like it's a some kind of a you know. Resort. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, so 
for me, it's not, you know, it's it's not fair. And, you know, my guys do 20 years or even more. And I go over there and fight, do five, six tours of duty, you know. And who knows, you know. Uh, and these guys, they just, you know, have fun and take pictures of themselves in the gym. <laughs> you know, let's let's pick up on that. <laughs> let's He's watching my links. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to touch that, Jeremy. Are you? <laughs> we'll be back in a minute on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.